is my guide, Attar is my guide. By the grace of Allah, Attar is my guide. My Murshid has changed millions of lives. The prophetic Sunnah, he is revived. The leader of the Sunnis, he is our pride. By the grace of Allah, Attar is my guide. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'a'udu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, welcome back to another beautiful episode of the Silsila Discourses of Attar. At the beginning of the Silsila, as always, we encourage each other, ourselves, that try to make as many good intentions as possible to gain maximum rewards. For example, I will listen to the Silsila for the pleasure of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. I will note down whatever important points there are. I will try to practice upon them and encourage them to my family, my spouse, my children, my friends and my society. In this manner, try to make extra good intentions whenever you can think of. In that manner, inshallah, we will gain maximum rewards, inshallah ta'ala. Indeed, there are many, many benefits in reciting the rood, salawat and salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in abundance. It is reported in the summary of hadith, our beloved master, the owner of Jannah, the knower of the unseen, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has stated, that person who recites the rood, salawat or salutations upon me 200 times on a Friday, 200 years worth of his sins will be forgiven subhanallah sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dear islamic brothers dear viewers and listeners of madani channel indeed our lives are very very short all the living people of today and the deceased of tomorrow those who will perish the frail, the feeble, the weak ones, all the children, all people, old and young. Certainly, the first night of the Qabr, of the grave, a very serious matter. Our master, Imam of the Ahlul Sunnah, the Mujaddid, the, revi the revivalist of the Ummah, the reviver of the Sunnah, the destroyer of Bid'ah, the scholar of Sharia, and the guide of Tariqah, the fountain of blessing, Hazrat Allama Mawlana Al Haj, Al Hafidh, Al Qari, Al Shah, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali. Despite being a great Waliullah, a saint of Allah Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, and a remarkable devotee of the beloved Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wishes the following in his will. He had made this before. He had said that after the burial, and Talqeen continuously recite Salat al Nabi, that is the Ruj Sharif, in front of the side, in front of the side of my Qabr, of my grave, towards the face for one and a half hours in such a volume that I can hear it. Then entrust me to Arhamur Rahimin and leave. If you can take more pain, then for three days and three nights, two relatives or friends should remain present at my grave and recite the glorious Qur'an and the Rood and Salat ala Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in such a volume without any pause inshallah azza wa jal my heart will get set with the new abode alhamdulillah azza wa jal complying to our master Sayyidi Allah Hazrat rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi our Shaykh Tariqat Amir Ahl Sunnat Hazrat Allama Mawlana Abu Bilal Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri Dhamad Barakatuhum Al-Aliyah has also written a similar will. In this regard, it is stated on page 394 of the book Discourses of Attar 
the 436 page book published by the publishing department of Dawud Islami Maktabatul Madina. It includes a chapter called Madani Wul. It is stated therein. If possible, those who love me should sit beside my grave after the burial for 12 days or for at least 12 hours and keep me delighted by reciting the Holy Quran, by reciting Na'at Sharif, Hamd and Salat Ala Nabi, Zurud Sharif. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, I will get accustomed to my new abode. Offer Salah with Jama'ah, with the congregation during this period as well as on all other occasions. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us reflect on the fear of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Then our beloved Rasul, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, had as regard to the grave, although he had been definitely blessed with deliverance. And in fact, he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is a means of deliverance for us. Sayyiduna Bara'ah bin Adib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu has stated We participated in a funeral with the noble Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam The Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam sat at the edge of the grave and cried so much that the soil became wet Then he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Make preparations for this Whenever Amir al-Mu'mineen Sayyiduna Uthman Ghani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to visit some qabr, some grave, he would shed so much tears to such an extent that his blessed beard would become soaked with his tears. It was asked of him, You do not cry when paradise and hell are mentioned, but you weep a lot at the graves. What is the reason for this? He replied, I heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam that the first stage of the afterlife is the grave. If the deceased attains deliverance at this stage, then the subsequent matters are easy. And if he does not win any deliverance at this stage, then the matters after it are more severe. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, have you seen how much Sayyiduna Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu would fear Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Remember, he is from amongst the Ashara Mubashara. Who are they? They are those ten fortunate companions, Sahaba alayhimu ridwan, who were heralded and they were given the glad tidings of Jannah, of Paradise, in particular from the blessed and truthful tongue of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam himself. Sayyidina Uthman Ghani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu He is one from among even the innocent angels that they would possess shyness from him. Despite that, he would remain so frightened of the horrors of the loneliness and the darkness of the grave. On the other hand, it is we who have completely forgotten about the grave. Despite seeing funerals off and on, we never contemplate that one day our funeral will also take place. Surely, funerals play the role of a silent preacher to us. The words they say always are silently uttered. It is whether we listen, we take note, take lesson or not. Oh, the lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, how sad it is. How sad. We see others being lowered into the grave, but we forget that we too will be lowered into the grave one day. Our fragility is such that if the electricity fails, at night especially, our heart becomes anxious. Especially when we are alone, we become extremely afraid. But despite all this, we don't worry for the extreme darkness of the qabr, of the grave. We are failing to offer our salah, to observe the fast of Ramadan al-Mubarak, to pay our zakah in full, despite it being compulsory upon us, and fulfilling the rights 
of our parents. Our days and nights are being spent in sinning, but undoubtedly the time of death is fixed and it is not possible to be delayed. If we continue committing sins like this and the call of death arrives suddenly to shift us into the ditch of the grave, how will we get through the first night of the grave? Man often plans, in fact making long plans, but his focus does not remain on the fact that the reins of his life are in the hands of somebody else. When those reins will be pulled suddenly and he will have to die, all those plans will be destroyed. In this regard, it has been stated that a young man from Madinatul Awliya, Madinatul Awliya Multan, left his homeland, his city, and his family to settle in a far off country. Why? To earn as much wealth as he could. He would, earn, he would earn a lot of money and send it back home to his family members. Based on a mutual agreement, his family decided that they will have a splendid mansion built. That young man would send money year after year and his relatives would have work done on the construction of that mansion and its decorations up until the day when the splendid mansion was ready and completed. When that young man, when he returned back to his home country, preparations to shift into the magnificent mansion were in full swing. But just one week before he moving into the splendid mansion, the young man passed away. And instead of moving into the splendid and beautiful mansion, he was shifted into the dark and gloomy grave. It is indeed very, very sad that most of us have become intoxicated with worldliness only and have forgotten to reflect on our afterlife. Some have become unconcerned about the destructions of this world. They have become unaware of the concept of death. They have become completely sunk in the pleasures of this dunya, of this world. Some have become oblivious of the certainty of death and so engrossed in availing the luxuries and comforts of this world that they have forgotten the horrors, the darkness and the loneliness of the grave. Today, all our efforts are being spent just to improve the quality of our worldly lives and concern for the afterlife is very rarely seen. Just ponder for a moment. How many well-off people have left this world? They have passed away from this world. Who had forgotten the solitude of the grave? They had forgotten the solitude of the grave. Being engaged in making as much money as they can. Always chasing fame and status. Occupied in expiring joys in short-lived friend circles and in rejoicing the flattery committed by those below them. However, the clouds of mortality came into action and the winds of death blew and the hopes of staying long in the world burst like a bubble. Death deserted their houses. It dragged them from their high mansions and palaces and shifted them into the dark and gloomy graves. Until yesterday, those same people were happily and jubilant amongst the bliss of their families. But today, they are grief-stricken and sorrowful within the horror and the loneliness of their graves. A person who is taken in by the deception of this mortal world and becomes completely negligent of death, despite seeing the vulnerability of this world, is surely regretful. Certainly, the one who falls prey to the deception of worldliness and forgets his death, forgets his qabr, the grave and resurrection and does not perform good deeds to win the pleasure of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal is worthy of condemnation. Warning us of this deception, our merciful creator Azza wa Jal has stated in Surah Fatir verse 5, 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور Translation from Kansun Iman O mankind, undoubtedly the promise of Allah is true let never then deceive you the life of the world and let not the great deceiver deceive you regarding the command of Allah O the lovers of Rasulullah Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel One who is well aware of the reality of death and the post-death proceedings can never run behind worldliness Have you ever seen anyone preparing furniture to be placed into the grave of the deceased? Have you ever seen air conditioning being fitted in the qabr in the grave? Or a safe being placed there to keep the person's money or cabinets made to adorn it with trophies, with ornaments that were worn in sports, with certificates of worldly achievements? You have never seen these things. And such acts anyways are not permissible according to the Sharia, the Islamic sacred law. So when we will have to leave everything here, what benefit will these educational degrees be to us? How will the wealth for which we worked so hard and struggled for our entire lives help us in the Qabr? In the end, how will the status on the basis of which we displayed arrogance and conceit ever come to our aid and assistance? Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, there is still time. Come to your senses and prepare for the grave and the afterlife. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is narrated by the great Sahabi, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, that our beloved master Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam held my shoulder and said, live in this world as if you are a traveler. Sayyidina ibn Umar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, used to say, when evening falls, do not wait for the following morning. And when morning comes, do not wait for the evening. Prepare for illness whilst you are healthy and make preparations for death whilst you are alive. In the final sermon of Sayyidina Uthman Ghani, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Allah Azza wa Jal has granted you this world for the sole purpose to cultivate for the afterlife, for the afterlife through its means. And He Azza wa Jal did not grant it to you for you to become lost into it. Without doubt, this world is destined to perish and be destroyed and the hereafter is everlasting. Make sure that the perishing world could not divert you and make you heedless of the everlasting afterlife. Do not give precedence to the perishing world over the everlasting afterlife because the world will be cut off and without doubt we have to return to Allah Azza wa Jal. Fear Allah Azza wa Jal because fearing Him is a shield from His adab, from His punishment and a means of approaching him. O the lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, dear Islamic brothers, listeners, viewers of Madani channel, the example of this world is like that of a pathway which is traversed only to reach the destination. Now, the destination is either paradise or hellfire. This all depends on how we have made this journey. In compliance to Allah Azza wa Jal, in obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, and the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, or in disobedience. Therefore, if we want to win the bounties of Jannah of Paradise and stay away from the punishment of Jahannam of Hellfire, then we will have to strive 
to reform ourselves and the people of the whole world. The Holy Prophet وسلم, has stated, I swear by the one who has my life in his control, if people were to see his, that is the deceased abode and hear his speech, they would forget about the deceased and would cry over their own lives. When the deceased is placed on the funeral bier and lifted, his soul sits on the bier desperately and calls out, O oh my kit and kin, may the world not play with you as it has played with me. I hoarded lawful and unlawful wealth and then left it for others. Its benefit is for them and its harm is for me. So fear from my suffering, that is, take heed from it. It is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Sa'id Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the beloved and blessed Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has said when a funeral is ready and the people lift the deceased onto their shoulders then if the deceased is pious he says who? the deceased says take me quickly and if the deceased is a wicked person he says to his relatives ah where are you taking me? Except for humans, everything else hears his voice and if a human is to hear it, he will fall down unconscious. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, may Allah Azza wa grant us the true understanding of the deen, grant us the understanding that one day we will have to leave this temporary dunya, this temporary world, this temporary life for the afterlife which begins its first stage in the grave. May Allah Azza wa grant us the ability of understanding this and preparing for comfort, for success in our grave and the hereafter. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi Al-Ameen. Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alihi wa sallam. Attar is my guide. Attar is my guide. By the grace of Allah, Attar is my guide. My murshid has changed millions of lives. The prophetic sunnah, he is revived. The leader of the Sunnis, he is our pride. By the grace of Allah, Attar is my guide.